bless God. So Paul is talking about lawsuits among believers. And he says, you know, for um, grievances, trivial matters, why are you taking them to people outside the church to judge? Don't you have um, competent people within the church to deal with these matters? Mm. He says, I say it's to your shame. Can it be there's no one among you wise enough, smart, you know, Bless God in church, we've got people from all walks of life, different educational backgrounds, social um, background, um, um, skill set. And there are wise people in the church. He says, and th there will be wise enough people, mature people, um, senior people, um, who are able to settle these matters. He says, um, But brother goes to law against brother, and that before on believers. Instead of dealing with things in the church, in the house of God, you're taking it outside as if you're kind of airing your dirty laundry, so to speak. Everyone has got problems, and it brings dishonor to the name of Christ. Because you should be able, there will be problems. We said, but you should be wise enough, smart enough, competent enough to deal with these things in-house. He says, to have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat. You know, if you have problems within the church, he says, it shows, well, you are not in victory. You are in defeat. There is a problem. You have to deal with it. And the enemy is going to use these things to get in the church to corrupt, to divide, and to defeat, to destroy the church. To have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat. We cannot accept um, division. We cannot accept um and believers not speaking to one another, um, uh, you know, they're not on good terms and things like that because about just the walk in love. And so this already, you know, Paul said, look, there's a problem here. You've got to deal with it. He says, why not suffer wrong? Why not rather be defrauded? In other words, he's saying, listen, you yourselves wrong and defraud even your own brothers. He says, what you're doing now Right, and there probably could be some people in the church who are wealthy and, and powerful enough that they are um, taking advantage of other believers in the church. Human nature, you know, offer greed, offer money. <clears throat> Let me just amplify this a bit and talk about this a bit more here. He says, if you take the matter out into the world, you probably would have magistrates and judges who are also corrupt. And maybe they may render an unjust verdict in a matter and you're going to be defrauded. They may be working and doing that. He says, in the house of God, I don't want you to do that. There must be people who are wise enough, smart enough to deal justly with this. And if, he says, even if they render a verdict, I may mean, not just seem to be completely just and fair. He says, you should probably be accepting of that. Now, this is dealing, again, not with criminal cases, not with very severe cases. It's talking about, um, you know, problems with, may have to deal with, with money and property and so on. I don't think Paul is saying extensively that well, there should never be um, lawsuits among believers. It depends on the case. I mean, the world that they lived in at that time is different from the world we're living in today. But if at all we can deal with a matter in the church, let's deal with it in the church. He says, look, you yourselves are wrong and defraud and you're doing it to your own brother. How dare you? How can you allow that <coughs> to happen in the body of Christ where you are cheating, you're robbing, you're being unjust and unfair to another brother in Christ?